During the summer months, I am a huge fan of citrusy fragrances. To me, they evoke that feeling when you are on vacation, totally relaxed by the pool or by the beach, and it's that kind of feeling that you try to embrace and extend through as much of the summer as possible. And the right fragrance can really capture that feeling. What's up guys, I'm Brian Sakawa. you're watching He Spoke Style, and today presented in partnership with Scentbox, six fragrances from my personal collection that I love for summer. First up is Blenheim Bouquet by Penhaligans. Obviously the little bow tie fell off the uh, top at some point. Um, I have to be honest and say that I bought this one without even smelling it because I read somewhere that Johnny Agnelli, the head of Fiat and global style icon used to wear it. Fragrance descriptions are generally pretty awesome and this one is no exception. So I'm just going to read it for you right now. This is from the Penhaligans website, a masterpiece a citrus cologne with architecture far more formal, crisp, and aristocratic than a simple white shirt. The setting is Blenheim, imposing, immutable, indeed a national treasure. We are at the home of the Duke of Marlborough, he for whom this bespoke scent was first made. Just like the most refined British humor, it is dry. Churchill was a fan. Like the best gin, aromatic whilst being as crisp as fresh laundry. It is as versatile as a bow tie, an invigorating daytime cocktail of citrus oils, spices, and woods. From a simple Cornish barber, Mr. Penhaligon, to contemporary urban beards, Blenheim Bouquet has always transcended the infidelities of time. There you have it. Now, how does it smell? You do get a lot of citrus uh, on the nose here, lemon, lime, and also a little bit of lavender. It's not sweet though, it is dry, just like they say in the description, and it is really quite gin-like. One interesting thing about this fragrance is that there are no middle or heart notes. As it dries down, it shifts from more of the citrus to more of a pine, slightly musky and a bit herbaceous. In terms of a quote unquote citrusy fragrance, this one definitely has a lot of depth to it and is very interesting. I would say it has about a medium projection and a medium kind of staying power. If it was good enough for Johnny Agnelli, it's good enough for me. Next, we have the original Eau de Cologne. This is 4711. Now this is considered a unisex fragrance though. Definitely Eau de Cologne's I would put more on the masculine end of the spectrum. As far as women wearing this, uh, probably most famously in the book, Breakfast at Tiffany's, not the movie, Holly Golightly wears this. Now, for all the history that 4711 has, I would consider this to be now a drugstore fragrance. It's very easy to find. It's not that expensive on Amazon. This bottle that I have here, 10.1 uh, ounces is under $25. This is the Eau de Cologne and it smells like one. You get lots of orange and bergamot and lemon. It smells much stronger in the bottle than it does on the skin. And as much as I love this for being the classic Eau de Cologne, my biggest complaint is that it has terrible longevity. Now, this is something that is nice to kind of splash on after a shower in the late morning or afternoon. Maybe you just got back from the beach or the pool. You kind of have to take a bath in it to get maybe more than 15 minutes out of it. You know, but for me, 4711 isn't about getting the most out of the fragrance. It's about capturing a certain feeling and it definitely does that for me. From the inexpensive to the quite expensive now, we're moving to Selection Vert from the Creed Private Collection. Now, this is how it's described on the website. Worn by the most notable of all psychoanalysts, sidebar, some people say that Sigmund Freud wore it. Selection Vert is appreciated by the most keen and discerning minds today. The blend is punctuated by peppery citrus and delicate mint a vibrant and invigorating herb known for its mood elevating properties. A great mind once said, there are no accidents and it is a deliberate stroke of craft that makes the refreshing and timeless selection vert showcase the discerning style of any who wear it. I mean, it's true, right? Seriously though, this fragrance is awesome and it is worth the hefty price tag in my opinion. And this is why unlike most citrus-based fragrances, this one really lasts. And that is a result, I think, 
of the ambergris or ambergris found in it that is in the base. Top notes are completely what you would expect. You get bergamot, lemon, and mint. And then in the middle, you have just a hint of pepper, which gives it more of a masculine quality. It comes in this bottle or flacon, if you prefer. And so what you do is get a little pipette to transfer the liquid to an atomizer. This is a very unique citrus fragrance in that it has some heft to it and one of my favorites. Next, we have a staple, a classic. This is the Aqua de Parma Colonia. Obviously, as you can see from the shape that the label is in on the bottle, I've had this for a very long time. It has traveled with me quite a bit. This is, I dare say, a must have for any guy for the summer. Description on the Aqua de Parma website reads, timeless, well-loved, and enduring. Our iconic fragrance crafted from sunny Sicilian citrus fruits is an elegant and fresh embodiment of the best of Italy. With a citrusy heart from a lavender and damask rose blend, the scent rounds with woody notes of vetiver, sandalwood, and patchouli at the base. Now, this is a fresh Italian take on the Eau de Cologne. It is a little bit more robust in the center, but unfortunately, as with many Eau de Colognes, it does not have a terribly long longevity. At most, you'll get two, three hours, enough for lunch after the pool or early evening cocktails, but still, this is a classic and totally worth having. Up next is an interesting little fragrance from Arquiste. This is called Latrogue. It is classified as woody, powdery, citrusy, and green. Um, I would definitely tend to agree with that, though I would put powdery kind of way far down on the notes that you get. For me, it's definitely more a uh, mix of citrus and wood. Now, if you know Arquiste, you know that they have some of the best descriptions for their fragrances, and obviously I can't pass up the opportunity to share this one. So here it is. In medieval Calabria, a family gathers to celebrate a good harvest. Within a cabin built of palm leaves and other woody branches, an aromatic bounty is presented. The citrusy scent of the Etrog Citron, a regional specialty, brightens the air while bracing myrtle and lush date fruit envelop the sweet warmth of the Mediterranean night. So I'm really glad the description includes the mention of date fruit because I've always thought that there was like just a hint of sweetness in this fragrance. Not cloying in any way, it's just kind of there. Um, it says that the top notes are Calabrese Citron and Bergamot and Sicilian lemon and myrtle. But to me, uh, it's kind of always smelled a little bit like lime. This fragrance is interesting because it is light, but it's also extremely complex, especially in its mid-range. Something very unique and a little bit off the beaten path for a citrusy summer fragrance. Finally, we have another classic. This is from Santa Maria Novella and the Aqua di Santa Maria Novella Profumo. This is actually Santa Maria Novella's oldest fragrance. It is the perfume that Caterina de' Medici commissioned uh, Dominican monks to create in 1533. This fragrance is a bunch of bergamot and it smells like fresh citrus. There really isn't much to say about this uh, other than like 4711, this is considered to be a classic in the Eau de Cologne realm. I love the history of the brand. I love the smell. I don't love uh, that it doesn't last very long at all. But again, a fragrance like this for me is more about evoking a certain feeling within myself. It's not something that I expect anyone to comment on or anything like that. But when I get out of the shower uh, after spending a summer morning at the pool, this is exactly what I want to smell. It reminds me of the sun, I can feel the heat, uh, I can see the blue pool water moving around, and that is a feeling that I wanna hold on to, and this fragrance helps me to do just that. So as you know, the way a fragrance smells is really dependent on your skin. You know How it smells on me may not necessarily be the way it smells on you, and fragrances change as they dry down on your skin. That's why it's important to really give them a try before committing to buying a full bottle. And that's where our sponsor for this video comes in, Scentbox. Scentbox is a monthly subscription fragrance company, basically an opportunity for you to try out new fragrances every month. They have tons of designer fragrances on their website. You choose two and get a 30-day supply of each in a travel-sized atomizer delivered right to your door. I've always been interested in Serge Luton, and I got two to try this month. Next month, I'm looking forward to a couple different fragrances from Aqua de Parma. Now, the best part about this is that if you don't like something, 
you don't have to wait an entire month to get something new. You can just go ahead and exchange it for another one quickly and easily and completely free of charge. Great customer service, a fantastic way to try out new fragrances, highly recommended. So that wraps it up, six fragrances from my collection that really evoke that summer kind of feeling for me. Leave your favorites down below in the comments. I love hearing your suggestions. Thumbs up if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, thanks for watching and stay tailored. Showcase the, 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 the. <laughs> Worn by the most notable of all cycle analysts. That's hard to say, of all.